It's M16. Another day in Los Santos. Hey, tryna make a way in Los Santos. Hey, yeah, yeah, uh. Wake up every morning, I got money on my mind. Gotta get on my grind. And if you ain't talking about no money, let me. Okay, welcome back. Um, hopefully you've uh, watched the first tutorial and didn't find it too uh, annoying and confusing. Um, I jumped around a lot, um, but it, like I said, you know, using the using the shared Lua and the QB inventory system and consumables, small resources, that should all be pretty basic. Um, most everybody knows how to do that if it's done much uh, programming or modding uh, in 5M slash QB. Uh, again, disclaimer, everything I'm going to show you today is uh, for QBus, it's not relevant to ESX. But here's what we're going to do today. So we've uh, we've went through step one and step two of our goal. Um, so we're going to start work writing our phishing script. So we are going to build some config files that can analyze data. And we're basically going to start building the entire phishing script. And I'm going to be a lot more detailed uh, with this uh, tutorial. So. Uh, we've got our QB core, we got our QB inventory, we got our QB small resources, QB target. Okay, so I'm ready to start creating a new script and I'm going to build it mostly from scratch. I am going to copy some things from the base uh, phishing uh, system, which is the animations and the uh, all the animations and, and the mini game that takes place and all that. I'm just going to copy that stuff uh, and I'm just going to build around that stuff. And the, there's a couple of reasons why. It gets really detailed whenever you get into the animations and properly creating your props and everything else. And um, you know that's for a different that's for a different deal. What what I'm trying to show you how to do is how to take the tools that are given to you, the base scripts, and modify those to your liking uh, to do what you want to do with it. So let's get started here. So we're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call it QB KSUI Fishing because I'm writing it and it's mine so <laughs> that's uh, that's that's what we're gonna call it and we're gonna add a new file and I'm oh, sorry we're gonna add uh, nope we're gonna add a new folder and this is gonna be our client scripts oh nope, I did that wrong uh, let's see let's do control Z yes okay so Inside of here, we're going to add a new folder. There we go. Client. Why is it doing that? All right. Well, let's just do it this way. Create a new folder client. And we'll just drag that into KCW Fishing. What in the world? Hmm. Alright, well, let's make another one. Server. Weird. I gotta admit, guys, I'm confused why that's happening. Hmm. Let's just undo it. Wow. All right. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put a file in here then. Let's just add a file. We'll add our, we're going to have a config.lua. And we're going to have a FX manifest. And we're going to have a client folder. There we go. And we're going to have a server folder. And in our client, we're going to have a client.lua. And in our server, we're going to have a server.lua 
I think I called them server and client. I might have called them main and main. Yes, I'm sorry. That's I let me redo that. Rename that main main client and main server. Oop, nope, I don't want to delete it. Rename it main. Okay, there we go. There's our structure. We got our client, our main, our config, and our manifest. Okay, so let's start with our manifest. Um, in our manifest, we are going to have, I'm not going to type all this out, I'm just going to paste it over. We're going to have our Cer Cerulean FX version, game GTA 5, uh, my description. Uh, my shared scripts, I'm going to need to use the QB core that we worked on in the last tutorial. So I'm going to have QB core shared and then just the asterisk there. It means it's going to include all the folders in QB core shared. Um, we've got our config.lua that's uh, here as a shared script that's going to share between main and uh, client and server. And then for client scripts, we're going to have polyzone. Uh, we've, we've got all these different polyzones that we add. Um, and I'm going to actually just go ahead and I forgot about this. I'm going to show you in this video how to make polyzones if you don't already know how to do that. And then uh, we got our client main.lua. So real quick, this is going to be real quick tutorial on polyzones because I'm, I'm dead here. I haven't been, I've been making a tutorial video instead of, uh, uh oh, be completely dead. What happened? No, let me myself. It's always when space there. Okay. Oh fuck! Quit. There we go. All right, Jesus. All right, so we're wasting some time here. No problem. I can cut this out of the video. I'll fast forward through this part for sure. So, wow, this is uh, not going terribly smoothly, is it? Uh, there we go go polyzone there we go polyzone wiki uh, polyzone uh, creating a polyzone that's how you do it manually testing point pz create son of a gun all right so you do slash pz create and then you tell it the type of zone so if you want to create a circle zone type in circle and hit enter name of the zone we're going to call it test one and the radius we're going to call it uh, 50 feet boom and so you can see it just created a poly zone all right and then let me make sure i do this correctly uh, circle, and then when you're done, that adds a point to the zone. Finish creating zone, PZ finish, okay. So then you do T slash PZ finish. Boom, that, that's created, and it's, it dumps it to a created zones.txt file that you have to go locate. And if you're wanting to add, like, a border, so the, the reason I use these poly zones, so I went out in the ocean, and I found all of the, um, went out there, and I found all the shipwrecks. And I made those hot zones. So I created circle zones around the hot, uh, shipwrecks to make hot zones for fishing where you can catch more fish. And then for PZ, create uh, poly zone. I think it's just poly. Yeah, uh, coastal. Or I'll just call it test two because I've already got coastal test two. So this one, uh, there you go. It's 
where I'm at. So you can go to T slash no clip. And then you just start flying around and you do T slash PZ add. Boom. And then you fly over here. T slash PZ add. And it's going to complete that back to the first point no matter where you're at. So if I come over here and I do PZ add. You'll see that it's connected back to my first point there. So what I did is I flew all the way around the island and I set a coastal zone that was just offshore. And then I flew around about 50 meet about this far inside of the coast. And I created a freshwater zone all the way around the entire map. All right. And I just tell you that because let me just go ahead and do PC finish. Okay, so that's how I created my zones, and I tell you that because it's important to our script later. So that's why I have poly zone in here, because I created circle zones for hot zones. I created poly zones for if you're fishing in coastal or freshwater, um, etc. Okay, so our FX manifest is done. We're going to be using all these files. And so we're ready to start our work. So we're going to start with our config. So for your config file, you have to have the same thing at the top of any config file you uh, you build. And I always do a update interval also because sometimes I I just do it as standard practice because sometimes I use that. So you need to have config equals config or table to identify your config variable, and this is now a global variable. So the first thing I want to create is my fish zones. So rather than type this, I'm going to paste it in, and then I'm going to go through it. So config.fishzones is my table. And then under that, I've got a label called coastal. And then under coastal, I've got tiers of fish. I've got tier 1 through 5. And these are the fish that you can catch in the coastal area, sardines through snook. And the snook would be the best fish that you can catch coastal. And then close that table and put a comma so that it goes to the next step. Close that table. This is going to close out coastal. And then I'm ready for my ocean. So my ocean is my second label. I've got my tiers of fish you can catch in ocean. And you can see this closes my tiers table. This closes my ocean table. And then we go to hot zone. And then here's the fish you can catch in the hot zone. We got redfish, snapper, tuna, Tiger is great white. Tiger is uh, tiger sharks. And so this bracket closes my tiers branch. This bracket closes my hot zone branch. And then we go to freshwater. Boom. Okay. So there's our that's gonna that's gonna work in combination with polyzone to tell the program what fish the player can possibly catch and then it's going to run through some odds to determine uh, a random chance of catching one of those fish and their stats their possibility of catching those fish will go up depending on the quality of the rig they're using all right so next i want to config my lures these are all things that we had added into the shared lua already we did that step first so that all these things would have a reference point when we got here and that's ugly. We don't want that. We want everything to be even. So with my lures, I want to multiply my odds. So if a player is fishing in saltwater and they're using shrimp, um, I, shrimp is my, instead of one, two, three, four, etc. shrimp is the name, the item.name, and it's going to be config.lures.saltwater, and then bracket, it's going to pick one of these. And then for each one of those uh, lures, I want to give it an increased odds of catching a fish. So if you are using an ultimate bait, you've got a 50% better chance of, uh, you got 1.5 times better odds of catching a good fish. And I do the same for freshwater with the freshwater baits. So we've got our lures, we've got saltwater lures. There's our table for saltwater lures. We've got freshwater. And there's our table for freshwater lures. 
and this will all make more sense whenever we go in and actually use these configs but the program is really good about telling you if you've got something wrong like if I delete this comma right here then I've got all these red squiggly underlines if you got red squiggly underlines it means something's wrong um, if you got your brackets wrong you see that the brackets change colors they all look it's telling me that something's wrong and I've got red squigglies at the bottom so you always want to look for those red squigglies and see if, uh, if you got an issue so there's my lures next I'm gonna have uh, my rods uh, rod rods that I can use and I'm gonna have some stat modifiers for that so here's my config dot rod modifier so here's my rod table all the potential rods that they can use and the rods are going to improve your it's going to reduce the amount of time it takes to catch a fish and it's also going to increase your odds of catching a good fish depending on the quality of the rod so i've created my rod modifier table i've identified the rods and then i've given each rod a set of variables that it can reference to uh, improve my odds of catching a fish and reduce the time it takes to catch a fish so next once the player has caught one of these fish they're going to want to sell those fish so i have to put in a fish price config so i have all my potential fish they can catch and i've got a price for each of those fish so when they go sell it they're going to get uh, paid better depending on the type of fish they caught and uh, these prices are you know you can make prices whatever you want these are too high i fished for five minutes earlier and made like ten thousand dollars so uh, Okay, so anyway, these prices are too high because um, in about five minutes I earned around ten thousand dollars, so that's too much. But anyway, so there's your uh, your fish prices for sales, and then the next thing you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to, or that I wanted to do, was to identify the specific rigs that could be used in the different fishing zones. So this is a big table here. So in each fishing zone, there's specific rigs that apply. So like if you're coastal, then you want to be able to use uh, shrimp and, and saltwater baits. Um, and if you're in the ocean, then you can use saltwater baits. And if you're in the hot zone, you're going to be using saltwater baits. And then um, fresh water is also here somewhere. There's, cause there's fresh water. Okay. And this, uh, this table is breaking this back out. So we combined in the config Lua, whenever you combine the bait with, um, and the shared items config Lua, when you combine a, combine a worm with a bait caster, then it gives you a bait caster worm um, as a unique uh, rig that way you can identify which which fishing zone you can use it in but in order to use the multipliers that we applied up here for the rods and the lures for our odds and our time modifiers um, you have to break it back out to tell the program what the rod is and what the lure is so I just kind of reversed the table here back out to identify each individual thing um, so that we could get our modifiers added in. All right, and then the next thing we're going to have in our config is going to be locations for the fishmongers. Our fishmongers are going to be our shops. It's going to be our peds that can buy fish from the players. And uh, it's going to be uh, config.fishmongers fish sales. Then we're going to have locations. La Spada is a typical location there's Pearl's restaurant on the pier uh, this is the first dock up the uh, uh, west coast uh, north it's like over by Polito and then this is the next dock that's even further north and then I put a place at the yacht club because the yacht clubs down by where you can buy boats at so it makes sense to have a place where players can whenever they return their boat or whenever they drop their boat off at the storage then they can sell fish there and then you have to have a place where you can buy all of your um, 
lures and rods. So we created these shops here. So we've got some tackle shops, Sea World's on the main pier, the outdoor store is up at the hilltop. It's kind of a, on the river where there's like a river rafting store. Um, then I just found a couple of other places. This Affliction Fly Shop hunting store, it's over on dock one. And um, then you got your boat yard at uh, Swank Tackle. That's going to be, um, I think that's over near the boat purchasing also, but I can't remember where I set that location up. It's kind of, it doesn't really matter. So that's everything we have for the config file for the, uh, for the phishing script itself. And the, I'm not, I'm not going to like share these files or anything because you you can make these things anything that you want and the idea that i'm going to teach you in the next section of this tutorial will allow you to make your configs any way that you want them and to understand how the loops work so that you can then use those config files so let's go to the server main lua next for our script because this is going to be um it's not going to have a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of code in here so always at the top of your script these days, uh, you got to have QB core exports QB core. This is just kind of the baseline variable that it needs in order to find QB core calls. And so the first thing that we're going to do, if you remember in my consumables, we can go back and look at it real quick in the consumables Lua. Uh, is this inventory? Oh, small resources. Sorry. And client consumables. So this is where we started, right? Uh, whenever you use your fishing rig, it's going to start uh, KSUI fishing server start. And that's going to be uh, a server main Lua. So we'll go back to KSUI Fishing Server Main Lua. And here's our code for <coughs> that, that, that command from the uh, consumables small resource. So whenever you use any one of the fishing rigs, it's going to trigger KSUI Fishing Server Start. Um, we're going to register our server event, and then we add our event handler. And then this uh, is the uh, command that was sent over the, the call that's sent over and we're going to have we're bringing over the rig we'll flip, flip back over there real quick Swivels. you can see here we were starting and we did the rig there's no source here because this is client side and so we're going from client side to server side so the server is going to know what the source is because it came from our client from from the individual players server or computer all right and once they get that it, this uh so uh, hold on a second where am i at here um in small resources let me go back to this real quick in the small resources to explain it again so like i had said in the previous tutorial i add this local trying to fish equals zero and then um, if the trying to fish is greater than zero, it'll just return. So what happens is if the player uses a rod twice really quick, like they have it in a hot click key and they hit the key a couple of times on accident. If you don't have this statement in here, then it will basically try to run the fishing script twice and they will end up getting two rods in their hand and only one of the rods will delete and the other rod will be stuck. So by putting in this delay, this 10 second delay, it allows them to only use one rod at a time. And so that's the purpose of that. And this, uh, you know, if, if they, if they're within this 10 seconds, the trying to fish equals 10,000. So it's going to just return. And so it won't open the, the function twice. All right. So we sent our rig over from there. Um, this is server side. So we have to identify our source. Uh, and then we're just going to, I'm just immediately sending it over to the client side. So I just caught it in the server from the small resource consumption and I send it right over to the client immediately. And I put in this little print here. This is a troubleshooting print to make sure that I received 
the command from the use of the of the item and that's just a that's that's just for my own reference to make sure the program's working properly whenever I run it so there's going to be some more stuff here in the server side but I think we'll go ahead and do uh, this function in the client side just so that we're tracking along here step by step so on our client side we are going to have uh, some basic required things, variables. So we're going to have our same QB core exports that we require at the top of all these things. We're going to be using a cache data table um, to identify our player pedestrian, the rod, and also um, in the in the original script they used it to identify the shop owners as well. The original QB phishing, but we're not going to use it for that. The cache data is just basically going to be used as a table for the rod handle. Um, we're going to make our job busy equals false, and then we're going to make our rod handle equal to nil, and we'll create the rod handle later whenever we build the animations. So before I can do the function um, that we're sending over, I got to identify all of my uh, polyzones. So earlier in the tutorial, we talked about the polyzone creation and how that exports to a file. So what I just posted in right now is just all of the polyzones that I created. Um, the, these are my hot zones. These circle zones are hot zones. And the, this is above some subsea debris. This is a kelp field that's out in the ocean. Um, this is a, a coastal hot zone. There's some. There's a really cool place with some rocks on the coast, and I wanted to make that a hot zone. So if some so somebody didn't have to have a boat. To fish there there's a hot zone at the end of one of the docks that you know players can discover where they can fish from the dock and do well um, anyway so these are the circle zone hot spots and then this freshwater boundary this is my poly zone that goes all the way around the coast to identify everything inside of that is uh, is freshwater and then the next one is my coastline boundary so this goes about 50 meters off the coast all the way around the island and that's our coastline and so anything that's not in either freshwater hot zone or coastline is going to default to ocean um, because all the freshwater is identified all the coast is identified and all the hot zones are identified so I don't have to specify the ocean um, because it's just if it's not one of these three zones then it has to be ocean and one thing that you, I had to modify from the polyzone create is I changed my min and max Z's um, I just made it minus 100 to 350 and um, so far everywhere I've tested uh, that's a good uh, min and max Z in order to encompass pretty much any place that you can fish on the map. Um, I think that the default is just based on where you set the point. Um, the min is like within a couple of feet of where of the height that you're that you're at when you set the point and the max is uh, you know like 20 feet or something. So I just overrode the min and max Z so that it would totally encompass all the vertical changes um, throughout the map for fishing. All right, and um, we're going to come back and set up the shops later. So we're going to go ahead and do the fishing start, which is where we were at. So just to backtrack for a second, we're at Main Lua. We're gonna do. We're gonna send this over to the client side, and we're gonna start our phishing logic. All right. So we're gonna register our net uh, event, our phishing start. We're pulling the rig over, and I'm doing a print just to troubleshoot. I'm gonna have some variables that I'm gonna use throughout this script. So I want my location. Uh, it's going to be nil. If I'm inside freshwater is false. Inside coastal is false. Inside hot zone is false. Uh, I want to find my player ped. I want to use him throughout this. And then I'm going to get my cords from my player ped. So this is uh, just some default things that you use in a lot of strips. A lot of scripts. Player ped equals player ped ID. That's going to identify the player that's uh, you know using this client. And then the coordinates get in entity cords is whenever the script launches, it's going to grab <coughs> where the player is standing at, uh, what his coordinates are. 
And so uh, inside freshwater is going to be freshwater boundary is point inside cord. And that's coming from our polyzone stuff. This, this information you can find in the polyzone wiki. It tells you how to test if a point's inside a, a, a location. So I had set my cords here as my player ped cords. And so I've got my variable inside freshwater equals false. So my inside freshwater is then going to test the boundary is the point inside. And then it's going to print inside freshwater. And so it's going to tell me either true or false. It's going to print out either true or false for this because this is a true or false statement. And then I'm going to say inside coastal and it's going to look at the coastal coordinates and it's going to decide if it's inside the coastal or not. And then I'm going to start my if statement. So right now I've got either a true or a false here and I've got either a true or a false here. These two zones, there's only you're either inside freshwater or you're not or you're either inside coastal or you're not. So if you're not inside freshwater, then it's going to check are you inside coastal. Okay, so if both of those things are false, I'm going to start my if statement. So if I'm inside freshwater, if that's true, then my location, which is nil up here, my location is assigned to freshwater. And so then my program is going to know I'm in freshwater. And so it's going to have to know which table to look for. And I'm going to do a print to tell, you know, to print out and for troubleshooting that I'm inside the freshwater. And then I'm going to trigger my event, KB. Uh, KSUI fishing client identify rig and I'm going to send my rig which I brought over from the beginning and I'm going to send my location which I have assigned here as freshwater so identify rig if I was in freshwater is going to receive my original rig and my location if it's not there then if I'm inside coastal then it's the same thing then my location is going to be coastal I'm going to trip the identify rig command and I'm going to send over the location that I'm in coastal. Now, my inside hot zone, I had multiple hot zones. Um, all of these, so this, this section here is the freshwater. This is all freshwater. This section here is all coast, coastal. Okay. And then everything up here is hot zones, like from line 12 down to line 122 those are all hot zones so i have to go through each i have to go see if i if i'm not in coastal or freshwater then i have to check if i'm inside any of those hot zones so i basically just run down the list subsea debris kelp one kelp two coastal one dock and it's just a a, a waterfall if statement if else you know, I wasn't in freshwater, I wasn't in coastal, so am I in hot zone one, hot zone two, hot zone three? And if I'm in any of the hot zones, it's the same thing. I mean, I have the same chance of catching fish because all the hot zones are salt water. When I get all the way down, if I'm not inside any of the hot zones, okay, so I'm not inside freshwater, I'm not inside coastal, I'm not inside any of the hot zones. So my final else is that I must be an ocean. So I haven't, well, I wasn't in any of those things. So that means I'm an ocean. And then at the end of that long waterfalling nest statement, I'm going to trigger my event, identify rig and location. My location at this point is either going to be hot zone or ocean. All right. And so this is a client side event. So let's go to identify rig we're going to do that next okay so uh, whenever it's going to identify the location it's going to kick over to my identify rig it's going to receive the rig and the location and i'm going to get i got a couple of prints in here to make sure that i've started this function and then i'm going to print out what the rig is and what the location is just to check my logic make sure everything's working i'm going to do a, a short wait here just to give the computer time to um to think so that it doesn't try to run through this too fast and then i'm going to have a loop this is our first loop so this is a next loop 
so basically what I'm doing is I know what my rig is and so I know what my location is and so I've got to figure out what my lure is and so I'm running through my config.rig.location.rig okay so config.rig where is that that's in our config Lewis so let's scroll down to config.rig okay so here's config.rig all right and then the second level of the table is location so we've got next config.rig.location okay and then we put the brackets around the location variable that we sent over so let's for sake of demonstration assume that we're that our player is standing in a freshwater location so what you actually have here is config.rig location equals freshwater dot rig so if we're assuming that we have freshwater then in our table we would have config.rig our location equals freshwater and so then here's all the possible rigs and so this is where we'd be out we would be at in this loop so if the next value that it returns from that table so this next config rig location is basically going to take a step through this table so this is step one step two step three step four etc so the next is just telling it read this value and then read the next value okay but if that next one and our config.location.rig.rig is not equal to nil this part right here config.rig location location dot rig rig and this is the rig that we sent over okay so both of those things are not nil that means that we have a match so if the next config rig and this config uh, if the if the rig that we sent over specifically isn't the next rig that it's looking at then the statement's not true but if the next rig that we're looking at and the rig that we specifically selected have values that means that we have a match then they're not equal to nil then that means our lure is the config dot rig dot location rig lure so basically we said we have freshwater and let's say we have a worm as our lure um, so we would have a uh, let's say we had a common rig with a worm attached in freshwater okay so then this would be freshwater here this would be common worm so we're in freshwater so we're in this table and we have a common worm and so our lure equals worm I hope you're following me because this is very important so our lure equals config.rig.location that's just identifying the table and then this brackets around location right here is freshwater and this demonstration that we're talking about and this rig.rig .rig, so the rig would be common worm Shit. Uh, it would be common worm so this one so we've got config.rig that's all the same freshwater common worm so now it's going to read that table and it's going to return the lure value so lure is going to be equal to the lure in this case this statement in our example equals worm all right and our local rod we're going to call we're going to set a, a variable that's nil and then our rod is going to equal because we're we're in a loop here right so this is the next this was true and so now we're going to grab our rod also so our config location config dot rig location is freshwater rig is uh, common worm and so our rod is common
So again, common worm. Now our rod is common. So just to reiterate this one more time, because we're going to be using this a lot. Config.rig.location. Config.rig location so that for those that config.rig.location puts us into this table all right and then for our example we're assuming that we were in freshwater so our rig is common worm and our location is freshwater so this next statement and i know i know i'm going over this again but if you don't understand them it's very important to understand how these loops work so this statement right here says, if the next value in this table is equal to, it, it, even though it just says and, it's, it's doing a step, and so it's looking for a match. So if this is true and this is true, then we can return our lure and our rod. So again, this statement says, if the next step in this table is equal to common worm, it's in freshwater and the rig is common worm, then we're gonna return a common rod and a worm lure. So now we've got our rod and we've got our lure. All right. Now we're going to, if we don't, if we don't have any matches, like say we're trying to use a common worm in salt water, uh, that's not an appropriate rig, and so none, never will this step through the table in saltwater match. And so then we're going to tell the, the player that he doesn't have appropriate rig. He can't use the, the rod that he's using in the saltwater, and he's going to need to go fish in freshwater. Um, but if we're successful and we get a result, we get a location and a rod, then we're going to go to case KB, K, QB KSUI fishing client use rod, and we're going to send over to that function our location, our rod, our lure, and our rig. And we got our rod and our lure here and here, and we got our rig was brought over from the very beginning from when we first used an item in our inventory. All right, so I've beat that horse to death. Um, I'm not going to spend so much time on the rest of the code discussing how the loops work. Um, so uh, hopefully, the, if you don't understand, you can just come back to this segment of the video. <coughs> uh, for, the, for the consideration of time for these tutorial videos, I'm going to call it there. Um, I hope you learned a little bit. If you did, uh, hit the like button. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one and uh, we'll pick up in the next tutorial at client use rod. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's M16. Another day in Los Santos. Hey, trying to make a way in Los Santos. Hey, yeah, yeah. Wake up every morning, I got money on my mind Gotta get on my grind And if you ain't talking about no money, little homie I ain't even got time Another day in Los Santos Tryna make a way in Los Santos Yeah, another day in Los Santos I gotta make a way in Los Santos Look, I'm about my cash Weasel on top, cause you know we get the bag M16, never vote, never drag Tryna make the city out and put us all on the map No cap the truth hit me if you need a track because i stay up in the booth in the city where it's pretty but your dreams come true everybody on the grind and that's something i salute yeah i told y'all i'ma make it on my soul i'm too real i can't fake shit all the love that y'all show is amazing gotta be on top because i came from the basement 16 wake up every morning i got money on my mind